Hello and welcome to Grace Church. Um, we're going to be having service today, so we're looking forward to hearing the Word of God. Thank you very much for joining us. If you're a new member or it's your first time here and you want some more information, don't hesitate to log on to www.gracechurch.se or if you want to ask a few questions or you want to, want to have a personal reply, you can always email hey, that's H-E-J, at gracechurch.se. Um, with regards to today's service, Phil will be leading us on, work, on devotion and preaching and delivering the message to us, as well as Ross will be leading worship. It's fantastic to have you guys join us, and we look forward to seeing each other, hopefully in person sometime soon. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful service. Hi, um, I'm answering some get to know you questions today, kindly put together by James. Um, number one, who are you? Uh, my name is Fiona, um, from the UK, been in Sweden nearly three years. Uh, as you probably guessed, I work for Grace Church um, part time, so um, yeah, I'm usually the one spamming the, all the church WhatsApp groups and asking people to do videos and other things. So yeah, that would be why. Um, number two, what are you doing in Sweden? So actually James, my husband, had a um, opportunity with work to come here about three years ago with Ericsson. Uh, it wasn't something we had to do, but we were just up for a change and an adventure. So here we are three years later. Uh, number three, who is the most famous person you've met? I haven't actually met a bunch of famous people, um, but probably the most interesting encounter I've had has been with uh, Princess Sophie in the UK. Um, I used to work as a nurse in the UK and she once opened a unit that I was working on. Um, so that was pretty cool. A bit embarrassing because I completely forgot the cue. You were supposed to curtsy and say, hello, mom. Um, and I completely forgot and just shook her hand and said hi. Um, but nevertheless, it was still still a cool encounter. Um, number four, best piece of advice you've been given. I'm not sure if this is really advice or just a random quote. But one of our friends from the UK once said, memories are not made of the mundane. Uh, and I thought that was pretty cool, just a, a reminder that, yeah, maybe sometimes you have to kind of push yourself out of your comfort zone uh, or take a risk, um, yeah, to uh, um, experience life to its fullest. So, number five, uh, last question. What are the best things you've ticked off your bucket list and what's the most exciting thing left on it? Um, so yeah, my bucket list, I would say, is ever-changing. <laughs> it probably changes from year to year, but there are um, a few things that have been on it for a while that um, I haven't yet done. And some things that I have, um, mostly travel related, I think. Um, one thing that I have done is um, been to the Dead Sea, which was really cool. So um, we went to Jordan a few years ago and got to bob around um, floating on the Dead Sea, which was just a, a neat experience. Um, another bucket list item I think that I have done is um, living in another country, so here in Sweden. Um, but there are still quite a few items um, still to be ticked off. So one would be visiting the rainforest. Um, I'd love to do that. Um, another thing would be to hike the Pacific Crest Trail from Mexico to Canada. Quite a big um, ambition there, but I don't know, maybe one day we'll get there. Um, and I think one other would be to live somewhere warm. Um, Sweden hasn't quite ticked that one, um, but yes, Maybe one day we'll move somewhere a little bit warmer. Well, good morning, Grace Church. I hope you've had a, a blessed week, uh, enjoying this weekend. Uh, first of May, uh, how time flies and all that. Um, I guess I guess it's spring, a little bit hard to tell. Um, but anyway, uh, my name's James. I'm going to be leading the worship today. Uh, I thought I'd start with a, with a song that's basically a, a prayer, really. Uh, it's, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Um, and then it talks about God's greatness and we are commitment to God as a result of his greatness. Um, so I'm just going to pray and then we'll, we'll sing this song that's, 
it really is a prayer itself. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for all you do, Lord. We thank you that you are mighty, that you are sovereign, and that you rule over, rule over all. Uh, Lord, we just pray that our worship will be pleasing to you this morning, that you will be lifted up, and that you will be glorified. Father, we ask these things in your name. Amen. greatness uh, the psalmist writes in in Psalm 29 uh, he writes ascribe to the Lord you heavenly beings ascribe to the Lord glory and strength ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness the voice of the Lord is over the waters the God of glory thunders the Lord thunders over the mighty waters the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. It's an amazing uh, testimony that David has there, uh, just how great, how mighty, how powerful God is. I just wanted to pick that up in our, 
our last two songs. And just that, that might, that power that God has. And yet this is the God um, that we can come to. Uh, this is the God we can praise, uh, that wants to hear our worship, wants to hear our prayers. Uh, it's an amazing privilege. Uh, we're going to sing first um, Splendour of the King, uh, and then we'll sing This is Amazing Grace. closing uh it's a great song uh this is amazing grace um i kind of think of this as joe's signature tune uh so i hope he doesn't mind me borrowing it um but it's just amazing it speaks of god's power uh it speaks of his grace uh and it's just a, a real real encouragement just a, such a blessing uh, to have this song so um we'll sing this as we close now uh, this is amazing grace
much. Um, Romans 6 verses 1 till 11. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Now ye know that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by uh, the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in the newness of life, for it we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of the sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve, and sin, serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, doeth no more death, hath no more dom dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin, once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye all, uh, all, uh, also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hello, I'm going to pray a quick blessing for the message and for Grace Church. God, we thank you for the message that Phil is bringing us today. We pray that you would open up minds and hearts that we would receive um, your word. Pray that it would uplift us, and uplift us, encourage us, and strengthen us. I also want to pray for Grace Church and all the the people that make up our community. I pray that for your protection over us. We thank you for your, your provision and your kindness in our lives. I especially want to lift up people that have family members in India today. India is struggling with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, and we know that you have you have the whole situation in your hand and we pray for the people that have family members that are sick and that are struggling we pray for your healing hand to come and touch them and heal them and we pray for strength and peace over the families and that you be with uh, the the members of grace church that are right now have family that is in india so in your name amen Good morning, Grace Church, and for those joining us today, you're very welcome. Um, we're looking into our series on the resurrection and the difference it makes in our life. Why, uh, when Jesus raised from the dead, what does that mean for us? Because there are some implications. There's not just that Jesus is no longer dead, he's, he's alive. And, but what does that mean? And what does that mean for us, for those who trust and follow him? So um, we're going to look at one of the one of the most amazing things for us, one of the things that makes the biggest difference is the power it gives us to transform the way we live. So what would you say is the one you know, what's wrong with the world? I guess lots of people have their, you know, can point at different things they would say is wrong. And, and right now, many people in um in, in Western societies are saying, well, you know, what's wrong is um the systems and the structures of the society that create things like racism and inequality. And so uh, we've got problems because the system is wrong, the structures are wrong. Now, of course, it's people who make the structures and it's people who make the systems and it's people who within those systems make choices um, to enforce or reinforce different things. And what we're dealing with, what the Bible says fundamentally the problem is is this word called sin that's the fundamental problem what is sin the author francis spufford in his book uh, called unapologetic he he says we've kind of had this tendency to make sin feel something um you know just a bit naughty not particularly serious like um you know or accidentally, you know, sort of swearing one day or being a little bit impatient or eating too many chocolates. And we've sort of tamed the word sin. But sin, in its essence, is something deadly and destructive. And we, and we live right now, don't we? We live in a, in a time where we've seen the deadly destruction of a virus. Um, and, and, the, and the extreme measures that people will go to and societies will go to to try and pr 
prevent and protect and guard themselves both in their families and their societies from the devastating consequences of this virus and you know people who have basically shut themselves away from from human contact for a year and a half or or, or so because they're you know they're, they're frightened of this unseen invisible small virus coming in even the possibility of it um well sin is like that sin is a invisible but deadly and destructive force and when it gets in amongst some people it can run rampant um, and even amongst those who are healthy and strong it can affect them um, and so sin is for us as humans when we turn our back on the ways of God we, we say no to that and you know, God is light and life and love and 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 Uh, that's all that is good and holy and so when we turn our back on light and life and love and all that is good and all that is holy we face and we choose the opposite of those things of dark we don't fit we don't think oh yeah i want the opposite of that we think oh that looks because this is temptation oh that looks quite good i would do that but we suddenly find out that it's death and disconnection and darkness and we've chosen for ourselves we've not trusted we've chosen uh, made our own choices our own ways and where that goes wrong it brings to us darkness and death and disconnection and despair and sin is a destructive force so the bible says sin is the, the biggest uh, problem between the relationship between god and people and it needs reconciling the two need to come together again but you're the humans as we as humans we're unable to do that in our own strength and so god has taken the initiative to solve this for us and so in romans chapter 5 uh, paul describes basically two categories for the human race those who are in adam adam representing uh humanity um adam just means human and so humans are uh, we're born into Adam. You were born into a nation. Um, you didn't choose your nation. Uh, you were born Swedish or American or British or Indian or uh, South African. You were just you, you were found yourself. I'm a citizen of this nation. I was born into Syria. I was born into uh, and we as humans we're born into Adam. We're born into the fallen humanity, and. Uh, we didn't choose it, but that's where we find ourselves. But actually then all our choices and our lifestyles confirm that we're in exactly the right place. Um, we, we belong there. We're very much at home in Adam. But we realize that Adam, the category, has all sorts of devastating uh, problems for it. Not only is disconnection from God. And so God sends another person a new Adam to represent a new creation. And this Adam is called Jesus Christ. And so you can either be born into Adam or you can be born again into Jesus. You need to be transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And and it's described like a new birth. And so Paul, um, Adam and Jesus. And so Paul says you get to go from one to the other through faith in what Jesus has done. By trusting in him, by by believing in him and on him, we get to go from the kingdom, the, the, the category of Adam to the category of Jesus. And uh, but so this language of birth um, is then how do we then live? What does that mean for us who have who believe in Jesus? And what do we now do? Um, we can struggle as people can't we we can struggle with our, our sins and our failings and our weaknesses and the, the habits that we choose to think why do i why have i done that again why did i why do i keep seem to be falling into this pattern where i will do things and then I, i'll just do something i'll make that choice again and i will i shouldn't have done that and i shouldn't have thought that and and we we, we notice within ourselves uh, choices and, and, and as we be as Christians when we do that we can feel oh maybe I'm not even a Christian if I was a Christian I wouldn't keep doing this so how do we change how do we deal with uh, not just sin in general but the specific sins 
of your life and my life. The, the very real things that you know that bring you shame, that point out that you're not perfect, that reveal your weaknesses and your faults and your failings and the crack, the cracks that are, that are there. And we are, how do we live differently? How do we do that? What resources, what power is there in this Christian gospel to change the way I live? And so we're looking at our reading this from Romans chapter 6. And at the center of Romans chapter 6 uh, is verse 9. And the verse 9 says, We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. There we go, the resurrection right here in the middle of our, our reading. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. And uh, death and rebirth, born again, dying to something, rising to something. And so Paul's argument here in Romans chapter 6 is basically this. What was true of Christ is true for you. If it was true for Jesus, is true for those who are in Jesus. So uh, it talks about death. So verse 2, we who died. Verse 4, we were buried. Verse 6, we know that our old self was crucified. Verse 7, for one who has died. Verse 8, now if we have died. Now, have you died? It's a strange thing, isn't it? Because you go, when did I, when did I die? When was I crucified? When was, uh, when was I buried? Um, I can't remember. I can't remember any of those things. That didn't that happen to me. But this is, this is Jesus's, this is Paul's point. That, that if you trust in Jesus, you become in him. And so our act of trusting in him is baptism. It's baptism. We who are baptized, don't you know, Paul says, that those who are baptized, you are baptized into his death. So we as a church, we don't, uh, we don't christen infants. Um, we baptize those who understand that it is a death. And we, it, it goes on to say that they will walk in newness of life. And so we think that uh, those who have learned how to walk can make this uh, choice. And so... We were buried into his death. So if you've never been baptized, um, if you've never followed the example of Jesus and the command of Jesus uh, and the instruction here to, to um, follow him into the waters of baptism, then we believe that actually there's something significant here that in a Christian life that you are missing. And we would encourage you, even if you were uh, christened as a child, as an infant, to make this choice for yourself and to be baptized because it is through this that we realize that we've died. And, and if we have died, if this was true of Christ and it is true for us, all of these other things come out into our life. Um, and what happens when we come up, the resurrection, the coming out of the waters into something to walk in, to live in. And so baptism becomes this moment, this powerful drama that we become an actor in to say death has no dominion over me. It's such a powerful declaration. And we who are baptized, we who have been baptized, we remember this is where we go. We go, no, I have died. I've died to all of that. So, we we'll start with Paul's, this, this whole chapter of Romans 6 is a lot about death. We died, we were buried, we were cruci our old self was crucified. And, uh, okay, so, so Paul, what does that mean? Well, uh, Paul says, do you know? Do you know that you've died? So there's some things that we've got to know that help us deal with the problem of sin in our lives. So he, so the question is, um, these people right there would go, oh, wow. Uh, so Jesus has forgiven us. So um, that's grace. We didn't do anything to deserve that. Jesus died for us. So 
really doesn't really matter how we live. We can just do whatever we like and uh, just say, you know, God, will you forgive me? And he's gracious and, and to forgive us. And so, yeah, great. We can just carry on um, sinning, basically, as much as we like. Now, interestingly, a couple of years back, I was having a conversation with, I was in a group with a group of people finding out more about Jesus, and I was sitting next to a Muslim guy, and um, and he basically made exactly that. He said, you Christians, um, you've got no incentive to, to live moral lives, um, because God will just forgive you, um, and so you can just carry on, you can do whatever you like. I wouldn't even bother to try and live, um, you know, a good life if I was... Uh, if I was a Christian, because I knew, just knew I could ask God to forgive me and that he would. Um, he said, but the difference is, is for us Muslims, um, this is why Islam is superior to Christianity, is because we've got rules for everything. We have this total system where we're told what to do and how to live a good life. Um, and so that's why Islam is superior to Christianity. And, he, and this um, way of thinking is exactly what Paul is dealing with here in Romans 6. He, because he starts with verse 1. He says, what shall we say then? Are we going to carry on sinning in sin that grace may abound in order for us to have more grace? Does that mean we just go more into sin? And he says, by no means, no way, never. Don't even think about it. That is so far from the truth. This is what Paul is saying. How can, this, how can he even think like that? But then the other alternative in Romans chapter 7, he goes, well, okay, well, what the answer then to kind of deal with this problem is surely is more rules. That's what we need. We need more laws. We need everything to be told by the law. And Paul says, no, that's not right either. The law only shines a spotlight on, on, on what's wrong. It has got no power in it to make you good. It only shows you how bad you are. So when you have a, a law and a command and you go, yeah, okay, now I see, uh, do not envy. Oh, man, I didn't realize, but that's what I'm, em I'm envious now. I'm jealous. Uh, and and you've, you, you've shown, ah, oh, the law shows you, the command shows you, puts a name to the things you're feeling. Oh, I didn't realize that's what I was doing. Oh, but now you put a name to it. I see it everywhere. Oh, I'm always jealous. Don't get angry. Oh, right. oh yeah, I'm angry puts a name to it because you didn't realize and so it clarifies shines a big searchlight spotlight on, on you know on your sins that's what the law does but it, what it doesn't do and can't do is actually help you be better it just shows you where you go wrong so Paul says well how do we do it if if we don't just carry on living our license and legalism, if license doesn't work, that doesn't apply, and legalism doesn't work, what do we do? How does grace help us? And this is what he deals with. So he says, don't you know that we died to sin? So if you died to sin, how can you still live in it? Do you not know? So the first thing that we need to know is we need to know that what was true of Christ, and we're in Christ by faith, is that we died, and baptism is the way in which we, that happens for us. And so here are the consequences for the one who has died. So you can see this argument. If you've died with Christ and your old self was crucified, it says the body of sin was brought to nothing, reduced, crumbled, defeated. It is dead. This body, this old way of life, these old thoughts, these old things, all that, that was destroyed, that is being crushed and defeated, brought to nothing. As a result, we are no longer slaves, set free, not under dominion. Oh, okay, we were living under this, well, well now I'm dead. Um, I'm not, I don't suppose I'm really under that, am I any longer? Um, death, has, death has kind of freed us from that because we're, we're if, you know, and of course you could stay dead, you could be dead in your sins, which is why death on its own is not enough. We need something to then regenerate us, bring to us new life. Okay, and so this is why the resurrection is so fundamental because Jesus is not dead, he is alive. And it says, right, so we go into, Paul says, following his argument in Romans chapter 6, verse 
uh, for we were buried with him by baptism. We go down into the waters, buried with him, and then we come up out of the waters as Christ came up out of the grave. And so we've got new life. We are alive to God. We are under grace, all because Jesus is alive. You have new life, you are alive to God, and you are under grace because Jesus is alive. And it says, because Jesus has died, the death he died, he died to sin once and for all, and he is death no longer has dominion over him, and he will never die again. He goes through death and out the other side, and we will be like him. We will go through death, and we will come alive to God, and he will give us, on that great and glorious day, an imperishable body like his that will never die. We will be drawn into the realm of eternal life. We will be taken to where he is. And so we will be freed from fully this body, this mortal body, which uh, with its old flesh. We, the salvation will be made complete. And so all of this happens because Jesus is alive. All right. This is, this is the theology of, of it. What are the practical steps? What does Paul say uh, the things that we need to kind of grasp in order to live differently? Because I know, um, and maybe this is your experience too, that even as we're Christians, you can still think, oh, why did I do that? Why did I do that? How did I find myself making that choice again how can i how i don't feel very new i don't feel like i've got new life i don't feel like there's power in me i don't um you know i don't always notice the change in fact and so sometimes i feel so unchanged that i wonder whether i'm really a christian at all so what do we do paul's got four four steps first one to consider yourself dead to sin uh, one of my favourite preachers on this topic, Terry Virgo, gives the example, tells us that the word consider here is Paul borrowing an accounting term uh, to line yourself up, to reckon yourself, to put things in the right column as you're counting. And so you've got, yourself, you've got to count yourself, consider yourself dead to sin. We've got to line ourselves up under the right column. And so Terry gives this example of, you know, when you, when you fly and he was flying uh, to Barcelona, happened to be flying to Spain. And, you know, the, the, the announcement comes over the, the PA system that says, you know, that as they come into land into Barcelona, that the time now here in Barcelona is uh, five o'clock. Um, Terry looks at his watch and says, uh, it's four o'clock. Perfectly good watch. Nothing wrong with the watch. Um, well, it's four. Uh, and so, you know, as he leaves the plane, he sort of imagines himself saying to the pilot, yeah, thanks for the flight, five o'clock, you know, <laughs> we know better, we know it's four. But in Spain, in Barcelona, it is five o'clock. You have to change your watch. You have to get with the new reality that the time is different here. Um, and so you have to count yourself now. I have to count it differently. I have to change. I have to adjust. And for some of us, that adjustment is like traveling from one European country to another and maybe there's just a small time difference. For some of us, sometimes the journey, the changes that we need to be made are like traveling around the world. We still have, we have to have this process and we feel like jet lagged and it's difficult, but we have to change, change our clocks, change our watches and, and get into this new way of life because this is where we are now. This is the reality. We are here. We're not here, we're here. And you have to live like you're here. So consider yourself dead to sin. The second step is do not present yourself to sin. Uh, if you get a new job um, and you're told to show up on Monday morning at uh, 8.30, and so you, you arrive at the office at 8.30, you find your manager and you present yourself, here I am for work, here I am, ready to do. What is it you would like me to do to start with? You know, I've presented myself to you for work ready to do and so but Paul says don't present yourself 
to sin. Don't put yourself in front of places to sin and go, here I am, what would you like me to do? Oh yeah, well I'd like you to, uh, I'd like you to go and look at these websites. Uh, right, yeah, okay, right, I'll go do that. Yeah, yeah, what I'd like you to do is uh, respond really angrily to what that person's just said uh, and I'd like you to say something that's really hurtful. Oh yeah, right, okay, I'll go and do that. You've presented yourself to sin and say, right, here I am, what do you want me to do? You've put yourself in a position um, where you could do, uh, where you're more likely to sin. But instead it says, don't present yourself there, present yourself to God. Turn up show, each day, show up to God and say, God, here I am, what would you like me to do today? Here I am, God, at every moment, here I am, God. What is it, what is it now? And, and the, the things of God, we, we, sh- we should be hungry for them hungry for all the good stuff because that's what comes with being a slave to righteousness we're not slaves to sin any longer we don't like that that's awful stuff that's ugh. but we what we've got we've been given the good stuff oh yeah i love that oh more love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and fruitfulness and self self-control faithfulness yeah we want more of that yeah great uh and so we'd be like um hey guys there's an opportunity to pray and you and, and our, our spirits would be like we can be like oh pray oh man i'm re- i think i'm just a bit tired today i think i'm just gonna you know just gonna switch on netflix and just go i'm just gonna chill out but pray oh you get to talk to god we get to be in the presence of god with his people wow oh yeah our heart response should be you can't be everywhere and do everything but our heart response should be oh i get to pray so let's worship Worship, oh, yeah, oh, let's see. No, no, you get to glorify God and praise his name. Wow, this is amazing. This is great stuff. I get to do all of this, in, in, you know, with Jesus and through the Holy Spirit. Wow, wonderful. How about we, uh, you know, guys, I really feel like we should, um, uh, you know, give of ourselves to help the poor. Oh, yes, great, because God loves the poor. It's came, I, I'm happy and free to give of the things that God has given me to make a difference. People say, I'd love to do that. Oh, as I'd love to do, I'd love more of the good stuff. I want to encourage, this is, this is what it means to say spur one another on towards love and good deeds. We want more of the good stuff. We should be, you know, um, I went this morning um, with a, uh, to Harger Park and did a 5K run with my son. Uh, and uh, as we were running around, I'm encouraging him, come on, you can do it. We can have more of this. We, you can get a really great time. You can do it. Uh, you, you know, you've got the strength. It's all been given to you. Here you are. Let's go. Let's go for it. Come on now. Um, and this is what it is, church. Is people come on, guys. You know, it's not so that God is pleased with us, but because God is pleased with us, because we've got this banquet, a feast of good stuff. We go. I want more of that. I want more of the good stuff in my life. I want to. I want to take all the opportunities to 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 make the most of it. To spur one another. Come on. Let's, the, the, good, the good stuff is this way. Let's go. So, consider yourself dead to sin. P- don't present yourself, your body to sin, but present your body, present yourself to God. Make yourself available. And then it says, walk in the newness of life. And this is, you know, what we're saying. We want to say, let's let's keep walking in that way. Let's keep going for more of that. Let's let's stay as far away from this and as close to this as possible. You know, let's not eat all of this junk stuff. Let's eat some of this really good, tasty stuff over here. Let's, uh, you know, let's build ourselves up in all that is good. Training ourselves in this. Strengthening ourselves in this. Uh, and as we do that, as we love, our affections and our hearts are drawn to this good stuff which comes from heaven, given to us by Jesus through the Holy Spirit. The more we want it, the more we enjoy it and love it, and, 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 and uh, uh, you know, the more it works through us. And we find that our, that our desires are changing and that our habits are changing and we're learning how to do this. And, and it's not because people have given you rules or you should you must get up at this time to read your bible and you must do this and you must you don't we don't have to do that and you can't do this and you can't do that the law says thou shalt not grace teaches us to say no thank you law says you must do this and you must do this and you must do this grace says i get to do this i want to do this 
I've been changed. I've got a new heart. I've got a new life. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? But we need to, we need to kind of work it through. Yeast goes through the dough in order for it to rise. We need this to kind of work its way out. So sometimes we get stuck on things. We get stuck on a particular habit that we find it hard to break. But it's because we're not taking these steps. We haven't said I'm dead to it. I can say no to it. Grace has taught me how to say no to it. And I'm not going to present myself to it. I'm not going to put myself in that place any longer. I've been freed. I don't have to listen to you any longer. Romans, second half of Romans 6 goes on to talk about slaves. Oh yeah, I was a slave to, uh, I was a slave to sin. You had to go and do what sin told you. But now I'm a slave to righteousness. That's what I am. That's what I am. I, I'm, I, I, have to, I have to go where righteousness tells me to go. And sometimes we forget, we, go, we hear the voice of our old master, we hear, we hear sin shouting at us, telling us, and we go, oh yeah, I remember that voice, that is my master, isn't it? It's like, no, no, you've been bought for, paid for, fully, fully paid up, you belong to someone else now. We know, we know that Christ being raised from the dead. We know that if it was true of him, it's true for us. I've died to sin. You've died to sin if you trust in Jesus Christ. It no longer has power over you. But Christ being alive has given us new life, new birth, new hope and new power to walk in newness of life. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that you saw the problem of sin and the, and the damage it does to us and the difference and the disconnection it makes between us and you and you took taken the initiative to fully deal with it and you came and you paid for the paid the price for us and you, Jesus you died and took death uh, so that the, our old sin would be crucified our old self would be put to death would be brought to nothing and instead then we could get to rise with you into newness of life and have your life in us now and one day fully uh, and, and Lord Jesus we get to enjoy the good stuff now and we get taught, we, we, we've been taught how to say no. Uh, and we can present, Lord, so I want to present myself to you. I want to present myself to you and I say, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you've changed my identity from being a sinner to a saint. And Lord, even when I get things wrong, you're faithful and just. We can just come to you and ask for forgiveness, but we, we're drawn now. We're, we're, we're not drawn to these things any longer. We, we're drawn to live a different way. We want the good things. Well, we want, we want the goodness, not because we need, because you're pleased with us, because that's what it is. We're living in a new community now. We've changed our, we've changed our watches. We, 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 live, we don't live in this way any longer. We live in this way because of you, because of what you've done for us. And so we say, Lord, help us uh, to live out what you have, to, to live in the good of what you have accomplished us, these wide open spaces of freedom and grace for your name and for your glory. Amen. God bless you. Any questions, get in touch. I'd love to hear from you, particularly if you're interested in baptism or you want to know more about what it means to follow Jesus. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great week.